Our Heavenly Father, again we ask, Lord, that you would uh, be with us, Lord, as we open your word to study uh, this topic of the 144,000. We pray that you would uh, give us understanding, give us wisdom, give us insight, Lord. And um, thank you again, Lord, for, for your word, for your truth, and for your love for each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, um, the 144,000, um, once again, is a topic that I think has caused a lot of confusion. confusion. Mm -hmm. um, the question that's on the, on the table today for us is pretty simple. Is the 144,000 literal or symbolic? Is a number literal or symbolic? And I'm just going to ask you all to put in the chat, um, what do you think it is? For those of you who think it is literal, put a one in the chat. For those of you who think it is symbolic, put a two in the chat. And um, I'm going to, and I've said it before, I, I was of, of one position mm -hmm. um, first, mm -hmm. and then after studying in a specific way, my position changed. So okay. we're going to talk about that. Okay. We're going to talk <laughs> about uh, uh, how to approach this subject. And... Um, and we're going to begin. We got slides okay. today, too. Yay. And that's right. how... Getting a lot of symbolics. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the screen. And um, again, the question is... Did you say two or one? Did you say two? One, one is literal, two, two is, is symbolic. Okay, so we're getting some ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the 144,000 literal or symbolic? And what I'm going to share here is... For those that say the 144,000 is literal, um, it is typically based on uh, a statement that uh, they have read from uh, Ellen White. Mm -hmm. And here is the statement. It says the living saints, 144,000 in number, knew and understood the voice, talking about the voice of God at the second coming, while the wicked thought it was thunder and an earthquake. And this is probably the, the primary quote that most people who say the number is literal, this is where they get it from. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm going to just let you know, uh, I believe that this number is symbolic. And somebody's um, saying, can it be both? Someone's saying, can it be both? Uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. Um. The reason that I changed my position from literal to symbolic is because after I went back and studied this subject using the Bible first, because at first I looked at that quote mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, the number is literal. Mm -hmm. That's all I needed. The number is literal. Mm -hmm. but, but then when I went to the Bible and actually studied the subject from the Bible first, mm -hmm. And then went back to the writings of Ellen White to, you know, see what she had to say on it. I was like, oh, I think I was wrong on this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so that's that's my transition. It went from. Can I say this? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Is and we've talked about this before, but like what you said you did is you had one quote. Right. Just like we don't. Well, first of all, we don't develop any doctrine off of. Um. Ellen White, mm -hmm. we develop doctrine off of the Bible. Right. And we, but, and with that said, we still don't take one verse. Right. One statement. Well, I'm talking about, but even in the Bible. Bible. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just one verse. You, it has to, like, you'll see one verse and be like, okay, we need to study this. And, and the truth is that one verse or that the truth of that one verse, whatever that is, is going to be proven throughout the Bible. Yeah. So there'll be other texts that are going to prove mm -hmm. like the Sabbath. Like you don't just use remember the Sabbath day right. to keep it holy. We don't just use that one. Right. So, I mean, we don't use Ellen White to, uh, to, 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 um, for doctrine. Like we don't use Ellen White for a foundational thing for doctrine, mm -hmm. but even if you did, which you shouldn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> you would need more than one quote. Right. So right. don't do that. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's a pitfall that we it's a, a, that we find absolutely. ourselves in sometimes. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to come back to this statement, okay? 
Um, but what we're going to do is first, we're going to go to the Word of God. We're going to go to the Bible, and we're going to see what the Bible has to say on this subject. So, mm -hmm. let's go to Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, and then we're going to go to Revelation chapter 14. Those okay. are the two places where, uh, where this number is mentioned, okay? Um, so, Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. Atante, can you read that for me? I, okay, there, there all right, there it is, okay. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which was sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand, all of the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to note here is that John uh, never sees this number. Mm -hmm. He hears, hears the number. Here's the number. So he heard the number mm -hmm. of them which were sealed. Right. And they were sealed. The number that he hears is 144,000. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go to another verse, Revelation chapter 14 um, and verse 1. And I'll read this. Mm -hmm. So it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harp, with their harp, excuse me. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their voice, or in their mouth, was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Um, okay, and I'm picking up some noise, uh, I think, from somewhere. I'm not sure where that is. But uh, okay, so here you have Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 14, which goes on to describe... Uh, the the four, the uh, one hundred and forty four thousand, and they are described as virgins. Mm -hmm. They are not defiled with women. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, follow the lamb with their servant goes, and none of them can hear or can sing the song, or no one can sing the song mm -hmm. but the one hundred and forty four thousand. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, we got some, some important questions to ask ourselves. Okay. Number one, uh, are only 144,000 redeemed from among men? Number two, uh, what does it mean that these that. are the, yeah, <laughs> what does it mean that these are the first fruits? Mm -hmm. Number three, uh, why can no man sing this song but the 144,000? What does that mean? Um, number four, is it only 144,000 males that are sealed? Mm -hmm. Number five, uh, is it only 144,000 that are without fault before the throne of God? And number six, do the 144,000 go out to get the great multitude? Mm -hmm. Are these two different groups? So, so, all, so if one is literal, they all have to be literal. If... Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about 144,000 male mm -hmm. Jewish virgins who've never been married? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If we take the text to be literal, then that's what we're looking at. These are 144,000 uh, Jewish males who have 
never been married, they are virgins. Mm -hmm. Or if they're married, they never had sex. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be a pretty odd way of reading. That just does not. It, it doesn't. It does not correlate with the rest. Correlate of, with the rest, the rest of, of the Bible. Bible teaches. exactly. Mm -hmm. We know that when it comes to the New Testament, um, Israel has become symbolic. Mm -hmm. Israel is now a symbol mm -hmm. of anyone that believes in Jesus, right? Whether they are Jew or Gentile. So, for example, in Romans chapter nine uh, and verse. Uh, six or nine, verse seven and eight. The Bible says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall, these, shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So, uh, and I'm just using one verse here to, to demonstrate this, but in the New Testament, Israel is symbolic, and I'm talking about after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. Israel is now symbolic of anyone, Jew or Gentile, that has accepted Christ. So understanding this, we know that Revelation chapter 14 should not be talking about, is not talking about 144,000 male Jewish virgins. Right. These are spiritual Israelites. So mm -hmm. if they're spiritual Israelites, mm -hmm. they are spiritual virgins mm -hmm. they are, that have not been defiled by spiritual women. Mm -hmm. And if all that is spiritual, and meaning symbolic, what, what a, a woman, woman is, is exactly. in Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. And so if all of this is, is symbolic, then it would only make sense that the number, which is 144,000, not 143,999 mm -hmm. or 144,001, mm -hmm. but 144,000 exactly right. is a symbolic number. Mm -hmm. But that's just only one line of reasoning. We're going to go through, through many here. We're going to mm -hmm. see a whole lot when it comes to understanding this, this uh, symbolism of... 144,000. Okay. All right. So, um, any, any questions or comments or thoughts so far? And maybe you could look in the chat because I'm going to... From them because it's pretty clear yeah. to me. So, let's look at the context of the 144,000 in, found in Revelation chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Because we began by reading, and I saw another angel, mm -hmm. and I saw angels standing on, four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Right. But what happens just before this? What happens just before this? If we go one chapter back to Revelation chapter 6, mm -hmm. here's what we see. This is right before Revelation chapter 7. Here's what the text says. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, <clears throat> and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And now, here is the last sentence before Revelation chapter 7 is introduced with mm -hmm. 144,000. Here's what it says. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Mm. The question is being asked, first of all, the sixth seal, we understand it to be a series of events unfolding, mm -hmm. right, leading up to the second coming of Christ. And we don't have time to get into all of that now. Right. But this, this series of events culminates with this question, for the great day of his wrath has come, who shall be able to stand? And then in the very next chapter... That's the last verse of chapter 6. Mm -hmm. In Revelation chapter 7, we have 144,000 that are being described. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
we need to focus on this question, who shall be able to stand? Mm -hmm. And there are other places in the Bible that actually address this same question. Notice with me the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? Same question. Mm -hmm. The last book of the Old Testament is asking the same question as the last book of the New Testament. Revelation chapter 6, who shall be able to stand? Mm -hmm. Malachi chapter 3, who shall be able to stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So let me ask you a question. Who are the ones that will be able to stand according to Malachi? Let's see if y'all can put it in the chat. According to Malachi, who are the ones that are going to be able to stand when the Lord comes? I'm, I'm waiting to see in the chat. The answer is those that have been purified. Mm -hmm. Now, what does purified symbolize? If someone's being purified, being they're being what? Cleansed. Cleansed. Put that word in the chat, everybody. Mm -hmm. Those who are able to stand are those who have been purified, according to Malachi, which means those who have been cleansed. So here's my question. Is there a process that we understand is happening just before Jesus comes that has to do with cleansing? Sanctification? Is there a process? There's a process. Is there something that is going on before Jesus comes mm -hmm. that starts sometime before Jesus comes that has to do with the cleansing of God's people? Yes, the process is called the cleansing of the sanctuary, the, sanctuary. Okay. the cleansing of the mm -hmm. sanctuary. Mm -hmm. now, now, I want to go back to the screen and let me show you this. Notice that it says here, but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? And the answer comes back, those that are purified. Mm -hmm. So could it be possible that the 144,000 represent those that are purified through the process of the cleansing of the sanctuary. But that's everybody. <laughs> Wait, hold I mean, on. That's everybody that accepts Jesus and, you know, as their savior and to allow him to work well, in their life because all of our sins go into the sanctuary and then the sanctuary has to be cleansed. You see what I'm saying? So like saying those who are who are asking for forgiveness for sin. So you're saying that's everybody? Yes. You're, so Everybody every who's asking for forgiveness of their sins. Well, I mean, everybody would be like a great multitude of people, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Everybody would be a great multitude of people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the screen, y'all. The text says, Malachi chapter 3, verse 2, who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller slope, fuller soap. Now watch this next verse. And he shall sit as a refiner of purify and purifier of silver, and he shall purify. He shall what? He shall sit. As a refiner. Now, let, let's come back for a moment, and I'm going to ask, what comes to mind when you see Malachi using this term that Jesus, that God is going to sit, mm -hmm. take a seat mm. to do this process of cleansing so that a group of people will be able to stand. Does that ring a bell to you? Does that point you to anything in the Bible? Is it on his mercy seat? Well, I don't know. Let, let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Notice what the Bible says here. I beheld till thrones were cast down and the ancient of days 
did what? Did sit. Sit. Why, why is he sitting? Why is he sitting? Let me just do this. <coughs> who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand with you, Pyrrhus? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and shall purify the sons of Levi. Almost as if talking to a priesthood. Mm -hmm. I'm going to purify how? Through the process of the judgment. I'm going to sit. What do we read in Daniel chapter 7? I beheld till thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. He sh he, for he is like a refiner's fire, fire and like fuller's soap. Mm -hmm. He shall sit as a refiner and purify the sons of Levi. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair mm -hmm. of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Now watch mm -hmm. this. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were what? Open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I believe that what we have here being described in Revelation chapter 7 is that when, when, Reve when Revelation 6 asks a question, who shall be able to stand? Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 7 is showing us the end result of the investigative judgment. And the end result of the investigative judgment is symbolized by this number 144,000. Mm -hmm. That's what we're seeing here. In fact, let's go back to the screen and I want you to know this. Put a one in the chat if y'all are following thus far. Yeah, yeah, I'm following. Okay. I mean, I just wanted, I mean, I don't know. I just wanted to say like, and I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure God is not literal. Well, I don't know. Is he literally sitting? Oh, who, I don't know. Like, you know, when you think about when you, I just, the symbolism makes me think if it's not a literal thing, when you sit to do something, it's because there's a lot to do, or there's a whole big process mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. 144,000 numbers so small compared to is God the great sitting? multitude yeah, 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 that yeah, he could yeah. just like, yeah. oh, I don't even need to sit because it's so yeah. fast. And I'm, is, is yeah, God sitting that's the to symbolism judge? I see right. in my head. Is he sitting to judge 144,000 people? Or right, in this judgment... He can blink his eye and do that. Who does the judgment include? If he blinks, I don't know what God does. But right? <laughs> Who does the judgment include? The judgment mm -hmm. includes the righteous dead, mm -hmm which will ultimately transition to those that are alive mm -hmm. to see him at, at the second coming. Right. So the judgment includes a great multitude mm -hmm. which no man can number. Notice this with me. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible said, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in season. He shall, his leaves shall also not wither, and whatsoever he, he doeth shall prosper. Now watch this. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind... I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding back the four... What, everybody? Put it in the chat holding back the four winds. Mm -hmm. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not, what's that word? Stand, and what's those next two words? In the judgment. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. So Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Go ahead, Tante. Well, some are, someone's asking, who are the, oh, it's moving so fast. Who are the women that could defile them? And then somebody said, isn't this a special group of people? Okay. The 144,000 is most definitely a special group of people. Mm -hmm. But how are they a special group of people? That's the question. 
Is this a special... And a special group doesn't make them yeah. a, a small number. A special group, it can still be a special group and, and either be, be a great multitude or be symbolic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it is a special group. That's not the question mm -hmm. at, you know, at hand here. The question is, is it is a group literal or mm -hmm. symbolic, mm -hmm. right? So what we've just seen is that the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Um, all right, Robin, I see your question. These are all good questions, y'all. These are questions that are, that are normal questions because you're like, wait a minute, if it's symbolic, then how can only 144,000 sing the song? We're going to come to that. All of those things we're going to come to. In fact, the reason I read that Ellen White statement first is to let you all know that I'm aware of that statement. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and I agree with the statement. And even a great multitude, I just think, just to put it in perspective, a great multitude is still not the entire world. Yeah. But it's a number that we can't not number, but, mm -hmm. but go ahead. Okay. Let, let's look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 7. Note what the Bible says here. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. So let me ask you a question. When the question is being asked in Revelation chapter 6, who shall be able to stand? We could go to Revelation chapter 7 and say, oh, it's the 144,000. Mm -hmm. But we could also go to Malachi and say, oh, it is those that have been purified mm -hmm. as the sons of Levi, symbolizing the priesthood. Mm -hmm. We can go to Psalms and say, oh, it is those, or, or Daniel, oh, it is those that have, that have uh, been judged worthy mm -hmm. to enter the kingdom of heaven. In the judgment, we can go to Psalm 1. Oh, it's the righteous that stand. The ungodly are the ones that are, that are not going to stand. We can go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 7 and say, it is the house of the righteous that shall stand. So the question now is, who is the house of the righteous? Mm -hmm. Who are the sons of Levi? Who are these that are going through the judgment and are found worthy? Th th that group is the same group as the 144,000. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a special group. It's a special group. Okay, let's keep moving. Now, I know, I know that for some of you are thinking, okay, well, wait a minute. What about, what about, what about? Hold all the what abouts. We just want to do this line upon line at first, and we're going to sprinkle some Ellen White in here. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to show you some things. You're going to be like, wait a minute. Wow, I never saw that before. So, um, remember in the book of Ezekiel, there's a vision of a great army. There's a vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. Mm -hmm. This is a picture, this is a vision, ultimately, of the resurrection mm -hmm. at the second coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know, check this out, you guys. Let's go to the screen. Then he said unto me, this is Ezekiel speaking. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the what? Come from the what, everybody? Put those next two words in the chat. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. Sounds like resurrection. Mm -hmm. And they lived. Sounds like resurrection. And they what? Stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army, like a great multitude. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto me, thus, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Mm -hmm. All of Israel. Everyone that is considered Israel represent these bones that come up, which is, which is a symbol of the resurrection. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your, whole, in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it, saith the Lord. So, this vision of Ezekiel's, this 
vision that Ezekiel has, which is of the resurrection, in its primary sense is talking about, you know, the restoration of Israel. Right. But in its, in its prophetic sense, it is a picture of what happens at the end of time when Israel, mm -hmm. Israel, not literal Israel, right. but symbolic like Israel, Israel, is raised to stand in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Who shall be able to stand? Those who Jesus is coming to redeem from the graves, mm -hmm. as well as those that will be caught up together with them in the clouds. All right. Mm -hmm. We're just getting started. Just put a one in, the, one in the chat if you're following so far. I'm just trying to listen. I know when you got something that's raveled up and you're thinking, but what about, but what about, but what about? Mm -hmm. I get that. So don't think I'm not coming to those, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm just trying to create a straight line as we unravel the yarn. And all I need you to do right now is, does the straight line make sense? Yes. We're just going verse upon, uh, line upon line, verse by verse. Does that line of reasoning mm -hmm. make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to get to some other things, but let's just keep, let's follow along. Let's follow along. And here's the next thing I want to show you. The sixth seal, the, the, the ceiling of the 144,000 is found between the sixth and seventh seal. Mm -hmm. If you've watched some of my other studies before, um, you will know that the seven churches parallel the seven seals. The seven churches parallel the seven seals. So if the six, if this 144,000 occurs under the sixth seal, then if we're looking at the seven churches that come before the seven seals, so the seven churches are Revelation 1 through 3, and the seven seals um, are Revelation 4 through 8. Revelation 4 through 8. If we parallel first church, for a first church, first seal, second church, second seal, go all the way down, we would know, we would see that the sixth church mm -hmm. parallels the sixth seal. The sixth church is the church of Philadelphia. Let's see what message is given to the church of Philadelphia. Now, Brother as Adventists, love. as Adventists, we, we believe that the Philadelphia church points to 1844. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have you have um, you have Ephesus followed by Smyrna and then Pergamos and then Thyatira and then Sardis and then Philadelphia would bring us. Each of these churches move us through a certain stage in church history mm -hmm. with the Philadelphia church representing the church around the time of 1844. Mm -hmm. OK, so note what is said about this. Kind of Philadelphia kind of Church. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh boy. Hold on one second. Pergamus, Thyatira, Sardis. All right. Um, just trying to move this off the screen here. Okay. So, <clears throat> has the Roman papacy changed, Rick? <laughs> Rick, why are you even asking me that question? Has the, has the Roman papacy changed? Um, I know I'm kind of diverting here. Okay. But the world may think the Roman papacy has changed, but it has not. It only received a deadly wound. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change. It's never going to change. I see you, Rick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see you. Okay. So let's keep moving. Um... So note what the Bible says here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true. He that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Behold, I come quickly. So that that's, this is the church of Philadelphia, and I've skipped a few verses here, because I just want to get to the end part of the message to the church of Philadelphia. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Now watch this. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more, no more out. 
and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. I will write upon him my new name. Now, this is the church of Philadelphia, right? And we believe that this church began roughly around 1844. Mm -hmm. One of the rewards that is spoken of for this church is I'm going to write my name upon you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write New Jerusalem upon you. I'm going to write God's name, the name of my God upon you. Notice this. Revelation 14, 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So here's my question. Are there those that would have been in the church of Philadelphia that have the father's name written in their foreheads? Yes or no? Put a one in the chat. Mm -hmm. Put a one in the chat. If what we just read is that the Philadelphia church was promised, I'm going to write the name of my father upon you. Mm -hmm. But we see in Revelation chapter 14 that it's the 144,000 that have the father's name written on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Are there those among the church of Philadelphia, so that would have been back in 1844, we are now in 2024. Were there, according to the Bible, people living in 1844 that would have had the name of God written on their foreheads? Hmm. There should not be one no in the chat. And if that answer is yes, then we must come to the conclusion that either the 144,000 represents a literal group of people who started being sealed back in 1844, and so far only a few people have been sealed, living and dead, mm -hmm. but once that number 144,000, that means a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people are going to be lost. Mm -hmm. Or, or... The 144,000 represents a group of people that extend way back beyond our time mm -hmm. that include people who have lived and died. Put a one in the chat if you're with me. I want you to know what Ellen White says here. Note this Note, manuscript releases, volume 15. Sealing indicates you are God's chosen. He has appropriated you to himself. As the seal of God, we are Christ's purchased possession, and no one shall pluck us out of his hands. The seal given in the forehead is God, New Jerusalem. And then she quotes Revelation 3.12 which is a reference to the Philadelphia church, mm -hmm. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. Mm. She literally states that the seal of God is Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, where God says, I will write, Jesus says, I will write the name of my God upon him and the name of the city of my God upon him. Mm -hmm. Remember how we talked about we talk about the seal as a name, title, territory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Na name, title, territory. Well, we didn't share that today, but we say that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if the if the if the if the pe if there are people in a Philadelphia church that I were yes sealed, to Veronica, my sentiments exactly. Yeah, it would be very depressing. <laughs> right. So, so if there are people that were sealed, that received the seal of God in the Philadelphia church, mm -hmm. then the idea that the 144,000 is a literal number of people at the end of time mm -hmm. is blown out of the water. And let me tell you, this belief leads to certain dispositions and certain spirits among us that is really causing a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to come back to that. Let's keep moving. I want to go back to the fifth seal. So we talked about the fifth, the sixth seal representing 
this is where the 144,000 are revealed. Mm -hmm. But I want to just jump back for a moment to the fifth seal. And I want you to know what happens under the fifth seal. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou, dost thou not what? Judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. So here's a picture of the martyrs throughout the dark ages mm -hmm. that the Bible symbolizes under the fifth seal as crying out for judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're crying out for judgment, it means that judgment has not what? Happened. Happened yet. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is happening pre-God's judgment. judgment. Mm -hmm. And notice what happens here. So they're asking, how long before you judge? Now watch this, the next verse. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Now, how are white robes given? These are people that have died in Jesus. Put a one in the chat if you understand that. These are people that have died in Jesus. These are martyrs. Why don't they have white robes yet? Because Why? the judgment hasn't happened yet. It, because the judgment had not happened yet. Mm -hmm. They are given white robes. How come they didn't have white robes before? Mm -hmm. Why are they given white robes now? White robes are given unto them and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season mm -hmm. until the fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So why do they get these white robes? They get them. They, they didn't get them at death. Mm hmm. How is it that they're getting these white robes, but their souls under the altar? Symbolically meaning, you know, they have died, but judgment hasn't been initiated. They have not been vindicated yet. Mm -hmm. How do they get the white robes? Please note this with me. Job chapter 29 verse 14 says this. I put on righteousness. Speaking of Jesus, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. My what, everybody? My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. Mm -hmm. Here, Christ's judgment is being symbolized. Symb Christ's robe is being symbolized as judgment. Yes. When these dead saints are given white robes, it is symbolizing judgment has begun. Pure, yeah, purification. Judgment has begun mm -hmm. and they have been vindicated right, in this judgment mm -hmm. and receive white robes. Mm -hmm. So this judgment mm -hmm. parallels everything we've been studying so far. Who shall be able to stand? Those who make it through the judgment. Who are they? Those who, when Jesus sits as a refiner's fire, when the fire is coming out from him, Daniel chapter 7, the judgment is set, the books are open, the saints are asking, how long before you judge? And now you see this number, 144,000. You begin to see this picture that the 144,000 is not a literal group mm -hmm. at the end of time. It is a group that is symbolic of all the redeemed. Mm -hmm. What's so beautiful about the... A great multitude which no man could number, which is all the redeemed that had been promised to Abraham. Mm -hmm. This is your... This is what the end result of your decision will be, Abraham. There will be a great multitude that cannot be numbered for, mm -hmm. as the sand of the sea and as the star of the skies. Go ahead. Well, I was going back to the white robes. Go the ahead. beautiful mm -hmm. symbolism of the white robes is like... I mean, white, when something is purely white, it's clean. It's purification. But we know that we are not completely clean because mm -hmm. we're sinners saved by grace. But it's representing Jesus' spotless life mm -hmm. that covers us. That's right. So all we have to do is ask for forgiveness. That, that's it. And he covers us. And he covers us. That's beautiful. Right. Again, you need to th think this thought through carefully, you guys. Like his righteousness is what God is, yeah. is seeing when he does the judgment because it covered our sins. Yes. The, these are people that died for Jesus. They are martyrs. Like the judgment is beautiful, but 
I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so stuck right there. Well, so because I, we don't, we, so I just feel like there's not, it's just not taught, it's taught in a scary way. Yes. And it, and it, and it um, causes so much fear. And I've talked about this before and anxiety, but we don't have to because it is the robe, the whiteness, the purification, the Christ like character that covers us. Yeah. And again, these are martyrs that died for Jesus, accepted Jesus, lived their lives for Jesus. Mm -hmm. How is it that they're just getting white robes in the judgment? Mm -hmm. That is crucial mm -hmm. to understand. Mm -hmm. It's not saying they weren't saved until the judgment. Right. But there's a process that happens in the judgment that is actually the, the giving of, okay, the declaration before the whole universe, white robes, white robes, mm -hmm. white robes. Now watch this, you guys. Let's go back to the screen. We're still talking about these white robes. Y'all remember this parable where they're, they go out to, you know, Jesus, the, the man sends out people to invite them to the, to the mm -hmm. wedding. Mm -hmm. They make all these excuses. And mm -hmm. then those that were bidden, you know, weren't worthy to come. So they say, go out into the fields, gather everybody in, right? Mm -hmm. Now notice this. So the servants went out to the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And mm -hmm. the wedding was furnished. And when the king came in to see the guests, to investigate the guests, there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said, bind him hand and foot and take him out, cast him away into outer darkness. There shall be weeping, gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Understand that the wedding garment, again, points to the investigative judgment. Mm -hmm. It points to the king coming in and investigating those who have been invited. Mm -hmm. All of this, beloved, points to this, this understanding that those who are able to stand when Jesus comes again are the righteous dead and the righteous living. Mm -hmm. The righteous dead literally stand upon their feet like a great army. Mm -hmm. The righteous living will join them to meet them to, to meet them in the air. And these together make up a great multitude. multitude, which no man could number. But the Bible is using this number, 144,000, to symbolize as a symbol of the redeemed, mm -hmm. as a symbol of the priesthood that will enter into heaven to serve with him a thousand years. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, we're still just scratching the surface. Let me show you something. Y'all ready for this? Note this with me. Go to the screen. I saw that the present test on the Sabbath could not come until the mediation of Jesus in the holy place was finished and he had passed within the second veil. Therefore, Christians who fell asleep before the door was opened into the most holy, when the midnight cry was finished at the seventh month, 1844, and who had not kept the true Sabbath, now rest in hope. For they had not the light and the test on the Sabbath, which we now have since the door was opened. Watch this. I saw that Satan was tempting some of God's people on this point. Because so many good Christians have fallen asleep in the trance of faith and have not kept the, the true Sabbath. They were doubting about its being a test for us now. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Satan is now using every device in this sealing time to keep the minds of God's people from the present truth and to cause them to waver. Let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. She goes on to say, I saw that she, and she names this lady that died, Mrs. Hastings, was sealed and would come up at the voice of God and stand upon the earth and would be with the 144,000. I saw we need not mourn for her. She would rest in the time of trouble. Okay, so let's break this down. Let's break this down. First of all, what she's literally saying is this. Yes, when Jesus moved from holy to most holy place, this is when the Sabbath became the sealing truth. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But don't worry about those that came before because they didn't have that truth. But they can still rest in hope of being sealed because the judgment begins with the dead mm -hmm. and moves to the living. Right. So I saw Mrs. Hastings, who is dead. She's dead, mm -hmm. but she was sealed. Mm. Now remember, only the 144,000 are sealed. Mm -hmm. So we have this idea that the 144,000 are only the living saints, but wait a minute, what we've just seen in the Bible, and now we've just added a statement in from Ella White which says, someone who was dead was sealed. Also, that the sealing time began when Jesus moved from holy to most holy place. So who is he sealing? What did Jesus begin to do when he moved from holy to most holy place? The books were opened, mm. and he's now looking and saying, okay, righteous, righteous. What do you think is happening to all those people being declared righteous from mm -hmm. Adam on down? Mm -hmm. What's happening to those people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you all think is happening to those people? They're what are they receiving? Judgment. They're, they're being judged, mm -hmm. but oh, once feel, the judgment, feeling. once they're like, okay, you're good, mm -hmm. what are they, do they get some kind of sign? Seal. A seal? A seal. Mm -hmm. The seal of God. Y'all put a one in the chat if, if this is making sense. Mm -hmm. If this is adding up to you. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, listen to this. There are living upon our earth men who have passed the age of four score and 10. The natural results of old age are seen in their feebleness, but they believe God and God loves them. The seal of God is upon them and they shall be among the number of whom the Lord has said, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. You guys, this is powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was saying back then, there are people who have received the seal of the living God mm -hmm. who have died and they'll come up in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Thus, the seal of God is the stamp of God's approval that someone has <coughs> that the dead mm -hmm. have been judged worthy to enter heaven, the righteous dead, and at some point that will transition from the righteous dead to the living. Mm -hmm. Which means this 144,000 group make up, make up, note this with me, after John hears the number 144,000, and here's a number, 12,000 sealed from this tribe, 12,000 from this tribe, 12,000 from this tribe. It would be arbitrary for God to say, I'm only going to, I mean, if you just look at chance, who's going to be saved from this tribe and who's not going to be saved from this tribe? Mm -hmm. It would be a crazy odd that it just happened to be 12,000 people from each tribe that just happened to be like, you know what? I'm really going to serve God. Mm -hmm. It is clear that this is a number that God chooses. Right. It is not an arbitrary number. No. It is a symbolic number. Mm -hmm. So when John hears and hears and hears and hears, then notice what the text says next in Revelation chapter 7. After he hears the numbers of those seal, then it says, after this I beheld. What did he behold? He behold what he just heard. Mm -hmm. What had he heard? I heard the number of them which were sealed, 144,000. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. And one of the elders said, said unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they? And I said unto him, sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, these are they which came out of great tri tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. 
How interesting that Revelation 14, 5 describes the 144,000 as they that are without fault before the throne of God. Great multitude, therefore are they before the throne of God. 144,000, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Beloved, this is the same group of people that are standing before the throne of God. Now, mm -hmm. I have, I know... Do you think we can do a little a little longer? Um, I know I just asked you that publicly, mm -hmm. so that to say no would be. You know I don't have a problem saying no in front of like thousands of people you either. Don't. You don't. <laughs> but um, uh, let's see, what is our time? Ten so, minutes. It's one fifteen. Okay, ten, ten minutes. minutes. Okay. Are y'all good with that? Ten minutes. <laughs> okay. Because I, I, I just want to hit this and show it as an example. Okay. okay. And there are a lot of questions, too. There, there, there's there's a lot of questions, questions coming. And all of you, so after this 10 minutes, please come back next because we're going to continue the study. Yeah. But go ahead. Okay. So check this out, y'all. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and a voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And I noticed this. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, which no man could learn. <clears throat> no man could learn that song, but the 144,000. Now watch this, y'all. Which were redeemed from the earth. Pause for a second. Who are redeemed from the earth? Is it just the 144,000 people that will be redeemed from the earth? Yes no. or no? Put the answer in the chat for me, please. No. Is it just that no the text me. says mm -hmm. 144,000 people are those that were redeemed from the earth? By the way, this is why Jehovah's Witnesses believe that right. only 144,000 people go to heaven. Everybody right. else stays on earth because they say the text says that 144,000 are redeemed from the earth. And that is what the text says. Mm -hmm. The issue is Jehovah's Witnesses believe that 144,000 is a literal number. These are like the cream of the crop saved. Does God have cream of the crop saved mm -hmm. versus just regular saved? Mm -hmm. I don't think so, y'all. So if the text says that 144,000 were redeemed from the earth, then this 144,000 must include every person that is redeemed from the earth. Right. And if it includes every person that is redeemed from the earth, then we got to ask, we got two options. Either only 144,000 people are redeemed from the earth or... Mm -hmm. There is a great multitude of people redeemed from the earth. Right. Watch this. Let me go to this, to this slide. Okay. Notice what the text says. This is the, this is the first time the song of Moses was sung. The Bible says, after the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has a throne into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He's become my salvation and my God. I will prepare him a habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. So now watch this. How many people sang the song of Moses back there in the Exodus? Everybody that got out of captivity sang that song. And that group of people were a mixed multitude mm -hmm. as well as a great multitude. Mm -hmm. It was not just Jews. Right. It was Jews and it was Jews and Egyptians mm -hmm. who all decided, yeah, we're leaving. We're following the land. Right. We're following Moses. Mm -hmm. And everybody that crossed that Red Sea were able to sing that song because it was their experience. Mm -hmm. It was their experience. Watch this, you guys. Note with me Isaiah 51, verse 10. Art thou not it which, which has dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that has made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Next verse. Come on, let's do this again. I Y'all need to see this in slow motion. Art thou not it which has dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that has made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over. This is Isaiah 51.10 pointing us back to the exodus out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now notice the very next verse. Verse 11. 
Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto where? Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. So here's my question. Who are the redeemed of the Lord that are going to sing on Mount Zion according to Isaiah 51 verse 11? Mm -hmm. There's my question, everybody. Who are the redeemed of the Lord that will sing on Mount Zion? Who will cross some kind of thing like a sea, like the, like the ancient Israelites did, mm -hmm. cross over to the other side? Who are they? Is it 144 literal people that are redeemed? Mm -hmm. Or is it a great multitude that is redeemed? Redeemed. Is it a great multitude mm -hmm. that are redeemed? Mm -hmm. The 144,000, beloved, represent the great multitude. The great multitude. Mm -hmm. The redeemed from every age. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. We still got a little time. Got five minutes. Notice what, notice Revelation 5, 9, verse 10. Yeah, and they, Okay. <laughs> Revelation 5, 9, verse, verse 9 and 10. Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals, for thou hast slain, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign upon the earth. Who is this speaking here? Who is the us that he has redeemed out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation? Sounds like the great multitude. Who is it that are made kings and priests? The great multitude. Those who are resurrected, who came to life and lived and reigned with, with God for a thousand years. That represents all the redeemed. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall come with singing unto Zion. Revelation 26. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, check this out, you guys. Councils for the Churches, page 353. And the remnant are not only pardoned and accepted, but honored. A fair mitre is set upon their hearts. They are to be kings as kings and priests unto God. While Satan was urging his accusations and seeking to destroy this company, Holy angels unseen were passing to and fro, placing upon them the seal of the living God. Everyone who is to be a king and priest for the thousand years have the seal of God upon them, you guys. They have the seal of God upon them. Sharon, remember what we just said. There were some who were saying in Ellen White's day, well, the others before us didn't keep the Sabbath, didn't keep the commandments. How can this be the seal? And Ellen White specifically said, no, they didn't have that light. Mm -hmm. So they were still good to go. Yes, the 144,000 as God's church, a symbol of God's church, do keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. But it doesn't mean that those who didn't keep the, the Sabbath beforehand right. are not part of um, that group. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Check this out. These are they that she's, she's still quoting. Listen, listen. The kings and priests, they are kings and priests unto God. While Satan was urging his accusation and seeking to destroy this company, holy angels unseen were passing to and fro, placing upon them the seal of the living God. These are the kings and priests. Mm -hmm. These are they that stand upon Mount Zion with the Lamb, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. Who are these? The kings and the priests. They sing the new song, the kings and the priests. Mm -hmm. They sing the new song before the throne, the song which no man can learn, save the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now check this out, you guys. Listen. What sustained the Son of God? This is Acts of the Apostles 601. What sustained the Son of God during his life and toil and sacrifice? He saw the result of the travail of his soul and was satisfied. Looking into eternity, he beheld the happiness of those who through his humiliation had received pardon and everlasting life. 
His ear caught the shout of the redeemed. He heard the ransomed ones singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. Is this just 144,000 singing the song? Or is this all the redeemed singing the song? Come on, mm -hmm. check this out. The day is just about to burst upon us when God's mysteries will be seen and all his ways vindicated, when justice and mercy and love will be the attributes of his throne, when the earthly warfare is accomplished and the saints are all gathered home, our first theme will be the song of Moses, the servant of God. The second theme will be the song of the Lamb, the song of grace and redemption. Listen to this, you guys. Listen to this. This song will be louder and loftier and in sublimer strains, echoing and re-echoing through the co heavenly courts. Thus, the song of God's providence is sung, connecting the varying dispensations. For all is now seen without a veil between the legal, the prophetical, and the gospel. The church history upon the earth and the church redeemed in heaven all center around the cross of Calvary. Let me break this down very quickly. Mm -hmm. What does she mean when she says the song of God's providence is sung connecting the varying dispensations? Here's what she's saying. Mm -hmm. In every dispensation, there will be saints singing that part because only they experience that part. Right. Only they experienced that time of trouble in which they lived and right. were faithful. Everyone has their part to sing, and it's, it goes from the beginning of time all the way down to the end of time. Right. There are people that are not going to be able to sing that last part of the song where the mark of the beast is issued. Because no, no, they no, 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 alive because they weren't time. alive then. Right. But we can't sing the part of the song that occurred during the Dark Ages because right. we didn't experience right. that. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's the, the song that's pretty, connects. That's pretty tight. As that's say. pretty tight. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's a chorus. It's yeah. a, you know, when you, when you like, see a chorus. A choir, you got the, choir, everybody has You got their, the bass. And the altos. You got the altos. Yeah. You got the, there are certain parts of the song, beloved, that we are not going to be able to sing because right. we didn't live through that time of trouble. It's pretty. Watch. Pretty awesome. Listen, this, the, the statement is not finished. This is the theme. This is the song. Christ, all in all, in anthems and praise resounding through heaven from thousands and ten thousands times ten thousands and an innumerable company of the redeemed host. All. Now you got people asking for more time. Like <laughs> I want more time. Because we have a whole... I hope the, uh, don't be busy I next want week. More time. Yeah, but they want a whole. I'm sure they want the whole study today. But there's Listen, a part two, and it's there's next a part week. two. There's next a part two. I, the way that the way that I'm going right now is going to end up being like a part three. So even better, guys. You get. Let's go back to the screen, y'all. Always just always show up here, LMOC. That's let's where you go back be. to the yeah. <laughs> let's go back to the screen. All unite. In this song of Moses and of the Lamb. Put a, I want to ask a question in the chat. How many sing this song? 144th, a special group of people that other people can't sing it? Or, no, beloved, all sing this song. Mm -hmm. You want to know who can't sing the song? The Lost. Candace it is said, the well, lost that the cannot sermon. sing the song. No, Candace, this is not the sermon, but go ahead. <laughs> Listen, let me go back to the screen. Mm -hmm. It is a new song, for it was never before sung in heaven. Mm -hmm. All sing the song. Mm -hmm. It is a new song, for it has... Now, beloved, you could fight this and be like, no, no, no. But what is there to say no about? She just said, an innumerable company of the redeemed sing this song. Right. 
the entire redeemed people sing this song. Now, this is what I'm talking about. When we talk about cognitive dissonance, right? Like, mm -hmm. well, I believe this. So even though everything you're saying makes sense, well, it can't be. Because, because I read this statement that said, we're looking at, and listen, y'all, the study's not done. Right. We have probably at least two more studies to go on this. So all those statements you're thinking of, don't worry. We're mm -hmm. getting to them. Mm -hmm. But so far, you cannot, I haven't made anything up. There's mm -hmm. no interpretation here. We've just been going, look. Right. Let's look at what the Bible says. And let's, now, now let's look at what Ella White says in light of what the Bible says. Right. Whoa, I never knew she said all an innumerable company mm -hmm. of people sing this song. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. I'm going to finish off with this. Okay. I'm going to finish off with this. I'm just going to be silent just for a minute. I need this time for silence. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all read, and then I'm just going to be silent. And then I'm going to read. The silence is for dramatic effect. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like to hammer the point home. Why is it that only the 144,000 that were redeemed from the earth can sing this song. Mm -hmm. Let's read. Holy angels will join in the song of the redeemed. Though they cannot sing from experimental knowledge. Right. He has washed us in his own blood and redeemed us unto God. Yet they understand the great peril from which the people of God have been saved. They were not, were they not sent to lift up for them a standard against the enemy? They can fully sympathize with the glowing ecstasy of those who have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Who is it that ultimately really cannot sing the song from an experience? It's the angels. It's the angels. angels. They don't have an experience. It's not like there are going to be some people in heaven. Well, I can't sing the song because you they're know, a part it, of our salvation. As far as like helping us and it, God sending them to help us, and absolutely, different things. But, absolutely, but they never. But they cannot it for themselves. sing the song mm -hmm. from experience. Mm -hmm. They cannot sing. She literally calls it out and says, "By the way, the angels can't sing." She doesn't say anything about well, there are other people in heaven that can't sing the song. Mm -hmm. She only says the angels can't sing the song. Right. They, they can sing the song, but they cannot sing it from experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She literally says in one place, the reason that the 144,000 can sing the song is because it is a song of their experience. Mm -hmm. An experience that none other has, have, has ever had. Mm -hmm. But then she says, it is the angels that do not have this experience. Mm -hmm. The wicked who do not have this experience are not even in heaven to think about singing the song. Right. It is the redeemed and they are redeemed. And listen, I'm not finished with this point yet. We're okay. going to come back and we're going to build on this point to show when Ellen White literally. Okay, I, I can't. It it'll take too much time. Okay. So okay. we're going to we're going to stop here. We're going to stop here. And what I was going to say was next week, what I'm going to show mm -hmm. is how in the great controversy, after Ellen White finishes describing the great multitude. Mm -hmm. Can I just get. Um, beat me up afterward. No, five minutes. Five, I'm, five minutes. I promise you. I promise you. Y'all put in the chat if you're on my. I don't beat my, him up ever. Or if you're on my that. side, put in five in the chat. And let's see, if I get more than 10 fives. Of course they want you all to go. I mean, this has been a very, very, very good study. Like, honestly, that, that piece with the, um, at the different stages, get to sing the different parts of the song. Like, yes. that's very beautiful. I really never saw it's, that it's like that. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, um, let me do, it's one quote that I want to read. One okay. quote that I want to so read. Let's not put a time on yeah. it. Let's just say, the, let's just read that quote. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Here it is. Watch this, y'all. Let's go to the screen, and I'm just going to read. I'm going to read in your hearing, okay? Upon the crystal sea before the throne, that sea of glass, as it were, mingled with fire, so resplendent with the glory, with the glory of God, 
are gathered the company that have gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. With the Lamb upon Mount Zion, having the harps of God, they stand the 144,000 that were redeemed from among men. And there is heard as a sound of many waters and as a sound of a great thunder, the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Now I want you to note the verses that she quotes. Revelation 14, 1 through 5. Revelation 15, 3. And then she quotes Revelation 7, verse 14 to 17. Can anyone tell me what Revelation 14 to 17 is? Who Revelation 14 to 17 is referring to? Who is Revelation 7, 14 to 17 referring to? It is referring to the great multitude. Why is Ellen White using verses that refer to the great multitude and saying this is the 144,000? Why is she applying verses that apply to the great multitude to the 144,000? Let me keep reading. And they sing a new song before the throne, a song which no man can learn, save the 144,000. It is a song of the Moses and the Lamb, a song of deliverance. None but the 144,000 can learn that song, for it is a song of their experience, an experience such as no other company have ever had. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These, having been translated from the earth from among the living, are counted as the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. These are they which came out of great tribulation. And again, she quotes Revelation 7 verses 14 to 17, which is referring to the great multitude. They have passed through the time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. They have endured the anguish of the time of Jacob's trouble. They have stood without the intercessors through the final outpouring of God's judgment. And now watch this, you guys. Watch this. But they have been delivered, for they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before God. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in their temple, in this temple, and, sitteth on, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And again, she quotes Revelation 7, 14 to 17. Let's keep reading. Listen to this, you guys. They, the 144,000, have seen the earth wasted with, pest, with famine and pestilence, the sun having power to scorch men and great heat, and they themselves have endured suffering, hunger, and thirst. But they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light upon them, nor on any heat, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne of them, and shall feed them, unto, shall lead them unto living waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Again, she quotes Revelation 7, 14. And here's the part I want you to catch. In all ages, she's talking about the 144,000, the persecution that they went through. And then she says this word, in all ages, put those three words in the chat, in all ages. And hey guys, listen, everybody asking questions, there's no, ask your questions, don't worry about that. You know, you can be like, well, pastor, I think this. So trust me, I'm not, you know, upsetting any questions. Don't worry about that. Ask your questions, say, but pastor, what about this, that? We're going to get to that. Feel free to do that, okay? Just, I'm just asking that as you ask your questions, know that I'm coming to these, okay? So let me keep reading. In all ages, the Savior's chosen have been educated and disciplined in the school of trial. They walked in narrow paths on the earth. They were purified in the furnace of affliction. For Jesus' sake, they endured opposition, hatred, calumny. They followed him through conflict, sore. They endured self-denial and experienced bitter disappointments. By their own painful experience, they learned the evil of sin, its power, its guilt, its woe, and they looked upon it with abhorrence. A sense of the infinite sacrifice made for its cure humbles them in their own sight and fills their heart with gratitude and praise, which those who have never fallen cannot appreciate. Angels. Mm. They love much because they have been forgiven much. Having been partakers of Christ's sufferings, they are fitted to be partakers of him in glory. The heirs of God have come forth from garrets, from hobbits, from dungeons, from scaffolds, from mountains, from deserts, from caves of the earth, from the caverns of the sea. On the earth, they were destitute, afflicted, 
tormented. Millions, not 144,000, millions went down to the grave loaded with infamy because they steadfastly refused to yield to the deceptive claims of Satan. By human tribunals, they were adjudged the vilest of criminals, but now God himself is judge. Now the decisions of the earth are reversed. They are no longer feeble, afflicted, scattered, and oppressed. Henceforth, they are to be ever with the Lord. They stand before the throne, clad in rich robes, richer robes than the most honored of the earth have ever worn. They are crowned with diadems more glorious than ever were placed upon the brow of earthly monarchs. The days of pain and weeping are forever ended. The King of glory has wiped the tears from all faces. Every cause of grief have been removed. You guys, listen to this. But John in holy vision beholds the faithful souls that come up out of great tribulation surrounding the throne of God, clad in white, robe, white robes and crowned with immortal glory. What, what, what though have they been counted the off, the off scouring, scouring of the earth? In the investigative judgment, their lives and characters are brought in review before God and that solemn tribunal reverses the decisions of their enemies their faithfulness to God and to his word stand revealed and heaven's high honors are awarded them as they conquer in, as they, as conquerors in strife with sin and Satan. Here's the last statement. But remember that everyone who shall be found with the wedding garments on will have come out of great tribulation. All right. Mm. You can take it off the screen. Ellen White. In the Great Controversy, and then I wrote two, read two separate statements. Mm -hmm. In the Great Controversy, as she's talking about the, the, the 144,000 and talks about the conflict they have been through, she then, in that context, begins to talk about the suffering that God's people have gone through in all ages. Right. And then she literally says, everyone that has the wedding garments are those that came up out of great tribulation. Mm -hmm. Every group, every mm -hmm. age sings a certain mm -hmm. part of the song that no other group can sing. Mm -hmm. But they all get a robe. But they all get a robe and they are all singing the song. It's all white and there's one Jesus. The great <laughs> multitude and the 144,000 mm -hmm are the same group. Most people struggle with this thought because of the idea that the 144,000 go out to get the great multitude after probation has closed upon the church first. A thought which we will <laughs> have to address <laughs> next, in the next, next segment. Yes, most definitely. Because that, that faulty thinking right that there. That thinking right there is what leads most people to say, yeah, the 144,000, that happens after the close of probation for the church, and then they go out and get the great multitude. These are but two different groups. But then the great groups. multitude wouldn't consist of people in the past. That's right. It would only consist of people, people alive. living at the end of time. That makes no sense. And that makes no sense. So we're going to come back to this. Mm -hmm. But we're going to close it out, out here. I know I took like 20 extra minutes. Yeah, and you caused people not to like me. And I caused people... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I cause people to say, just, just let them go. <laughs> and say, do I beat you up? No, you don't. Okay. Of course you don't. <laughs> you see how big he you is? Don't. I don't beat him up. Mm -hmm. He doesn't beat me up. Okay. Um, yeah, this, that was, I mean, it's very good. It's very clear. Yeah. Like every time we, you share this study and I get to be there for it, it's extremely clear. Yeah. And all I'm asking in this study is, you may be hearing this for the first time and you're mm -hmm. thinking, no, but what about 100, you know, what about, so I'm just saying, just, just hold this on one plate. Like, mm -hmm. okay, so here's this version of it, and, but I'm still thinking my version. L let's complete the whole study and then mm -hmm. you decide for yourself, okay, mm -hmm. which of these makes more sense. Right. Okay? So that's all I ask. Yes. But, but as you can see, we're going Bible. Yes. And then we're allowing spirit of prophecy to amplify what the Bible says instead of, no, what Ellen White said, and then but you to, can't prove it from the Bible. Because if you go, Ellen White said, try to prove from the Bible that the 144,000 is a different group than the, great, than the great multitude. 
Try to prove from the Bible that the 144,000, that there's a close of probation mm -hmm. where you get the 144,000 then going out to do the great multitude. You can't do that from the Bible. Right. right. You're going to be depending mostly upon your interpretation of what you think Ellen White said, which is a demonstration that that view is false. Because mm -hmm. Ellen White is going to fall in line with the Bible. Okay. Right, right. That's it. Yes. So be back here because you know you want more study. Like, they'll be here if you want to go two more hours. So if you want to go two more hours, come back next week so that you can um, hear part two. Invite a friend, uh, family members, people who just don't understand, people who just avoid this topic altogether, be like, I don't know. And just bring them because this is Bible study and this is what we're supposed to be doing. So we're thankful that you've been here with us for this part one uh, to this study. And we are inviting you to continue to worship with us today as we are going to move into our divine worship service. So don't go anywhere. Uh, you can take a little bit of a break, but don't go anywhere.